Welcome in to another episode of Betting the Pitch. This is Betting the Pitch number 198. And uh, we're going through some midweek matches. We have La Liga in Spain catching up on time they've missed, of course, and also the Copa Italia final. Um, I know there, or I think there's Premier League this week, but I'm not caught up yet on those matches. So I will be looking there at some point soon uh, and then really trying to catch up as quickly as possible. Might do another podcast tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. But um, for now, let's jump into La Liga right away. Um, well, actually, I probably need to get my uh, promo codes out of the way. So if uh, you're listening and you don't have a bet online account, listen here because you should get one. Um, always good to have as many outs as possible. All lines quoted in this podcast are courtesy betaline.ag, my favorite place to get my bets down early. Reduced juice is offered at almost every game you want to bet right up until game time. Please follow the link found in this podcast description to fund your account and use the promo code GW50 to receive a 50% match bonus up to $1,000. Um, also want to mention my Patreon. Uh, I've got a bunch of subscribers there. I feel like things are going very well. Um, people I think are getting a really good value. Um, essentially what you're paying in a daily uh, amount at pregame you're getting for the full month um, at Patreon. You get all my leans, you get everything as I'm locking it in. Things change. Unfortunately, lineups have really killed a bunch of plays lately. Um, they've helped a bunch as well. But uh, when that sort of thing happens, it gives me the chance to, uh, to kind of debrief and let you know if I'm buying off something or never actually locked it in fully. Um, so let's make sure that uh, you go check that out if you're interested. Um, or, of course, you can always follow on Twitter, the real underscore G Warner. If you're on YouTube, please hit subscribe, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Please leave a five star review. OK, time to get into it. Start with La Liga. Um, I do have the table in front of me. I haven't finished the Sevilla Betis match, but I did a pretty good job getting everything else done while I was in Nashville. Um, Jewish weddings, by the way, my favorite thing in the world. Uh, not Jewish myself, but kind of wish I was now. Um, we'll start on Tuesday with Celta de Vigo hosting Girona. Um, one side, Celta going way the wrong direction right now and falling towards relegation on 39 points. There are four points above safety with only three matches to go, but uh I would say it's nervous, especially after Iago Aspas, their heart and soul didn't play in their last match. Girona, on the other hand, they are newly promoted that are climbing up the table on 48 points, two points behind Athletic Club in the last uh, European spot. And that's pretty much all they're battling for right now. Um, current number, Celta Vigo, a half a goal favor right now, bet online, uh, but very juiced on Girona at the, this point. So it's really a, probably a, a plus one quarter, but for some reason, they're not moving it just yet. Over under is two and a half, juice to the over. Um, Celta has not really had a good defense for years. They've always been a good offense and a team that wants to play offensively. Um, I don't know that's necessarily going to change here, especially at home, but uh, things have not been going well for them, and I don't really trust them at all as a favorite. Girona, I mean, they're not done for this season, they're still fighting to try to get in the European position. Um, didn't have a great performance in their last match, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, ultimately I feel like they've, um, uh, been the better of the I, Girona and, uh, uh, Almeria, unfortunately, like look the same to me. They're newly promoted. It's hard for me to get them straight, but Girona's had a much better defensive season really, uh, which is why they're a lot higher up the table. Uh, of course you need goals for that too, but Almeria has been pretty bad defensively. And I, I feel like Celta, they've been playing so poorly that um, I understand them being favored because they're at home against a newly promoted side, but certainly this does not reflect the table. I don't really think this is a trap of any sort because Celta have been in the league for a long time. They've great, got great players. It's possible that they're a little bit better prepared for this matchup because Yago Bas Aspas didn't play this weekend, but like they were talking about in the post-game interview about how, um, of course, he was a huge miss for them. And I feel like if he's not even in the side when they're trying to get to safety, um, he might not be available just a couple of days later. So lean to Girona. Um, Forgot to mention, we'll be doing best bets end of show, like always. And I'll try to remember to post him on Instagram because it's not been good so far. Uh, I think Girona plus a half is my biggest interest in that matchup. Um, don't really have a lean for under, unfortunately, because Celta de Vigo's defense has been so bad and they don't really want to play it either. We also should add that host Almeria after a huge, huge win against Barcelona, which might have clinched them a Champions League position, honestly. Um, and yeah, they're five points ahead of, of Villarreal with only three matches to go. Villarreal had a big, big win. Um, and we're climbing up the table, but ultimately did not get enough, especially if you're all getting a, a win at the death, essentially. Um, don't really think it was deserved, but uh, welcome to Kike Setien, who's now the best manager and the hottest manager in all of La Liga, it seems. Um, besides Jose Luis Mendilibar, which is another hilarious tale. Uh, Real Social Dad, currently a one and a quarter goal favorite to Almeria, over under two and three quarters juice to the over. A um, little more juice on Almeria on, as a side. Almeria, they're in 14th position on 39 points, same sort of story as Celta. 
um, four points ahead of the drop zone. So they're not safe, um, but this is a big deal for them. They're probably going on the road where their defense has really struggled, uh, but they're probably going to try to keep this as low scoring pos- as possible and keep as close to a clean sheet as they can against social that if they can get a goal. Awesome. Um, and we'll see if that happens, but uh, real social that a one and a quarter goal favorite is pretty big, especially coming off the celebratory atmosphere of winning at Barcelona. I mean, they deserve the win. They got a Barcelona side that clearly didn't care at all. Um, should have known that even a, re- a rotated Real Sociedad side that wasn't really going for that match, it seemed to me, with a lot of changes, um, still were. I mean, they're kind of an underrated underdog, a little shorter than I was expecting. I've seen that be a really, really successful um, at angle in, in Serie A if, in Italy. If you can find an underdog that's not um, as big as they should be, and then it keeps going down, you wonder why the heck all that's happening. And I've learned to trust the Serie A market a lot more than I have the La Liga one. But anyway, um, you know, especially that they're a great defense. They, but like, are they? They just they do have a pretty good job of, of not conceding goals. I expect Almeria to play very defensively here as well. Probably one point gets them to forty, make them five points ahead with whoever's playing behind them with three matches to go. Are they getting two wins from that? Probably not. Um, if you're at the bottom of the table, Hitafe on eight wins, Valladolid on ten, Espanol on eight themselves. Um, I mean, I guess they're not safe, but I, I feel like a win would be huge. But I think Almeria knows their defense has been so bad. I don't know necessarily that their manager is, is the style to play conservatively into that level. But um, I think my biggest interest in this one is the under uh, more so than anything here. I think uh, Almeria, I, I feel like they can hang in there, but a two nothing loss for Almeria. Sociedad's really happy at the final whistle. Almeria's disappointed, but ultimately um, that would easily cover the two and three quarters. So that, that'll be my interest in that one. Uh, and I'll move on now to the nightcap on Tuesday. And that's Bayer to lead hosting Barcelona. Um, what can you expect from Barcelona? I really don't know. Um, they don't care. I mean, they got nothing to play for. It's literally who's going to get kicked out of, of the team and the club and the organization because they don't have enough money and they've clearly been running. A, they're basically bankrupt is what it seems like to me. Um, the Spotify camp now is, I'm sure, one of the most embarrassing things possible for them, but um, welcome to the club. Um, Bayer League currently a half a goal underdog at home. They are sitting in the final relegation position on 35 points. Should have been way clear from this, but have made really big mistakes really all season. Um, I feel like their players deserve more, but they are who they are at this point. Um, they make big mistakes. They're not good enough to really overcome that. And they're in big trouble because they really have Hatafe in their crosshairs. That's about it. Hatafe was awful this weekend and got a really poor draw at home to already relegated Elche. But um, vitally to have a ton of pressure on them. Um, they're at home, should have a really good environment. It's awesome getting Barcelona off a of really poor performance. But I do wonder how much Barcelona responds to that because they probably are pretty embarrassed from losing at home. Um, they did celebrate a ton and partied a lot last week, I guess, before their match with Real Sociedad, but um, it was a really awful performance. They're a half a goal underdog on the roads. So they need to win to cover here. Um, I don't know this is enough of a number for me to backfire to lead. I certainly love home dogs, as anyone who listens to this podcast understands. Um, I think from where I currently sit on this one, it's just it seems like a price that isn't big enough for me right now in Vita Lead. So I'm going to see it's, it's more, there's more juice in the Vita Lead plus one half side right now. Um, we'll see where this goes. I imagine it'll climb before kickoff because people see Barcelona. Wow, they only have to win. I'm going to bet that. Um, but also want to check out what Barcelona starts because I guess I got to have a Vita Lead line or, or lean at this point because it'd be silly not to. Um, also lean to under two and three quarters because uh, I just really don't believe in Barcelona as an offense or defense has been pretty good because everyone's afraid of them, but they don't score enough. They're not the Barcelona's of old. Their defense really isn't that great. It's amazing to me that they won La Liga by such leaps and bounds. But um, Real Madrid certainly were, I think, more interested in the Champions League, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, had some reason to go that direction, I guess. Um, interesting in Vida lead. We'll see what happens with that one and, and the ender, of course. Uh, moving to Wednesday, a bigger match day. We have Elche hosting Sevilla. Currently Elche, bottom of the table, um, and fighting for next year, essentially. But they... Um, have been playing really well. I really honestly, since they've gotten relegated, the same sort of thing in France with Angers. Um, teams that are way adrift play kind of better when they realize that things are over. And I think a lot of their opponents are kind of underestimating them like the human psychology would. Um, currently, Elche, a half a goal underdog at home to Sevilla. Sevilla trying to fight into a European position. Uh, over under is two and a half, juiced heavily to the over. Um, it's just hard for me to want to back Elche in this situation. I, I think. 
Under is scariest to me because Sevilla don't really want to play a low scoring game. They're trying to attack the whole time with Mendy Bar with a high line. LJ's defense is why they got relegated. They're so bad, but they've been playing a lot better lately. I think trying a lot of new things, new lineups, which honestly scared me away from them this weekend at Hitafe, which I was very disappointed in to see that they got a road draw. But um, I feel like this is a, a chance for Elche. I mean, one of the last couple of matches in La Primera División because they're about to go down to La Segunda. And, uh, I mean, the crowd's been pretty there. I mean, they had a bunch of traveling fans, which was kind of surprising to me considering they've already been relegated. But, like, I mean, you never know when you're getting back. It's hard to get promoted and uh, it might take a while. So um, there are certainly also all these players in the shop window trying to get uh, acquired by another La Liga side so they don't have to go down to Segunda, I would expect. Um, and that some motivation where Sevilla are clearly focused on, um, they're, I mean, they're, they're focused on finishing in European position and they're, I guess, a couple of days further away from their triumph against Juventus in the Europa league. But, um, there's a lot of leg or miles on the Sevilla legs right now, uh, on the road, they got to win. And that's going to be a hard thing to do, uh, especially after watching what was a, a pretty tough match coming off the Derby de Sevilla or the Gra- El Gran Derby as well. Um, just a really tough combo. Great spot for El Che. Uh, Villarreal then hosts Cadiz. Currently, Villarreal one goal favorite. All the juice right now. Runners two and three quarters. Very juiced to the over. Um, rare to see a Cadiz match really juiced to the over. I must say, um, it kind of makes me think that there's some value there, uh, especially if this hits three. I mean, Villarreal have not really been interested in playing defense for a while, uh, but they're honestly they're not that good of an offense. They've been scoring a ton of goals. I don't believe in it. Um, I've been paying very close attention to them because I have them to finish in a Champions League position, which looks like that's probably going to be a loser, but um, got a really lucky, fortunate win at the end uh, this weekend, I believe, at Girona. Um, I don't think it was deserved. They, I mean, they're great on counterattacks, got a really good first goal, but Cadiz are going to do everything they can not to let that happen, especially on the road. Uh, Cadiz currently on 38 points, three points ahead of the last relegation position or the top one of them. All four points out of Espanol. Um, they're not safe. They're going to go and play as defensively as they can. Um, I do think that that plus one is interesting to me, but it's probably more, I'm more interested in the under two and three quarters and really when it hits three, because it looks like it might trend to get that direction. Um, I feel like Hadith are going to play this for a goalless draw, do everything they can, because um, every point they get, especially on the road against one of the top teams in, in La Liga, uh, it's huge for them to stay in, in this competition and stay in the league for like a fourth straight year when they're expected to go down in year one. Real Madrid then hosts Viral, Raya Vallecano, easy for me to say. Uh, Real Madrid, a three-quarter goal favorite with all the juice over, and there's two and three quarters juice to the over heavily, um, similar price as the Viral Cadi, so it might climb to three as well. Uh, Rio have been really bad lately. Hard, hard to say anything other than that. Real Madrid have nothing to play for, though, and what an awful loss of Valencia, but huge. If you're a relegation side and you get the top team in the league at your, or one of the top teams who just doesn't care anymore, that's a huge spot to be in. Uh, I would expect Real Madrid might show up. Uh, I mean, they got nothing else to play for and got embarrassed by Man City, then lost to Valencia. Uh, Vinny Jr. suspended after his red card, which was ridiculous, and a lot of other things. I mean, who knows what's going to happen here, but Rio don't have a lot to play for. It's a Madrid derby, a little bit more important, of course, to Rio Vallecano because Real Madrid have at least one other Madrid derby they care about way more. Um, maybe some motivation for Real Madrid to finish in second place versus Atleti, but honestly, I don't see that that matters because they don't care about that. There's a little more money in the in the coffers at the club. Um, they're getting Champions League. There's nothing they can play for in the league. So I feel like it's probably a good spot to be on Rio Vallecano. Rio, they go on the road. They're going to sit and counterattack. I feel like that's a great spot to be. Um, I don't know that I really want... I mean, I guess I do have some interest in under two and three quarters, but I want to see a three before that gets of interest to me. Um, I guess I'm interested in Ryle getting three quarters of a goal as well, uh, getting odds right now, because that probably hits plus one. They've not been playing well, though. Um, and I, I do wonder, though, when Karim Benzema doesn't play. And if he does, would it happen in this one when Vinny Jr.'s out as well? I'm not sure. But uh, I would think that they got to focus on next year and try to keep everyone as healthy as possible um to get through the summer and then get ready for going at it to try to win La Liga again next year as well as the Champions League with 35 year old legs like Karim Benzema um so I'm very interested to see where this what this lineup is going to look like because uh there's going to be some big problems for Real Madrid scoring goals especially against a seed a side that wants to sit back and counter counter attack you uh next we have Espanol hosting Atletico Madrid currently Espanol a quarter goal underdog at home with all the juice over there's two and three quarters juiced almost fully to the under um so Espanol, big win. Um, 
at, especially taking a lead, giving up an equalizer on a tough penalty and a handball, and then then taking a lead again and winning. Um, big big step for them, but I don't believe in them. Um, they're bad offense. They're horrible defense. Atletico Madrid are one of the hottest teams in Europe right now. So a lot of really good form teams right now. Sevilla, Atleti, plenty in in, in Spain, but um, I feel like Espanol. I, I don't really know what to do with this one. I mean, I guess I understand the market. A lot of times towards the end of the season was starting to really give a lot of respect to relegation sides, but I don't think Espanol are close to Atleti in terms of talent. And I mean, they've got a lot of pressure on them. They can't play defensively. They got to go win. Uh, I guess the draw will put them level with Valladolid and Hitafe, but um, they're playing after at least one of them, the same time as Hitafe. So um, I, I mean, they're probably playing for a win at home. They got to. Um, they were awful against Barcelona in the same venue last week, but they got a big road win uh, on the weekend. I just, I don't really feel, I mean, it's one of those situations where if you trust the market, it's way too short of an underdog. But, and Atleti certainly did lose to Elche uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, but um, I feel like it's less likely to have another awful performance uh, from Atleti who have been so good and so dominant really for a long time now. Uh Last one on, on Wednesday is Real Betis hosting Hitafe. Currently Betis a half a goal favorite. All the juice on Hitafe on the road. Over under two. Juiced heavily to the over. Might climb to two and a quarter before this kicks off. Um, Hitafe, they're just barely safe right now. The second, the penultimate spot that stays in the league, or the ultimate spot, it's the last one. Uh, but they're tied on points of Ida lead, who have a home match against Barcelona, um, who don't care. So this could, I mean, they could be in, in trouble here, unfortunately. Uh, Real Betis have not been playing well for a while. Their disciplinary record is a joke, um, but they're a half a goal favorite and they haven't really been playing very well. Plus, Etafe are going to be fighting tooth and nail to try to keep this. Um, they probably want a point. They probably take that at the Benito Villamarín if there was offered it to them. Um, of course, they want to win, but I don't really know how you could expect that sort of thing. Um, I think I'm interested if this number moves to two and a quarter. It's not there yet, so I'll wait, but... Um, I think it will get there based on the, the juice right now. Um, and I don't think I like Hitafe as a half a goal underdog because they just don't score enough goals. And I think you need that, especially going on the road to a tough place to play. But Real Betis coming off the El Gran Derby is also another reason to really like the under because um, they're going to be pretty gassed, I would expect, a couple of days later after playing the best lineup they could. Moving to Thursday, we have Mallorca hosting Valencia. Currently, Mallorca, a quarter goal underdog at home. Over under is two, juice heavily the under. Um, this one is the wrong team favorite to me. Uh, Valencia are favored because of their pursuit and climb up the table ish. Um, I, I mean, it's really nice when you play the top of the league and they don't care. I mean, I guess it truthfully has been better than that for Valencia, but, um, I'm just not really a believer in what they are. Um, I feel like they, uh, really haven't been scoring many goals. Their defense is not good, but it's been somehow preventing, goals as well i just i'm not a believer whatsoever um and my Oakley have not been playing well though to be to be frank um they've had some really tough decisions going against them lately um but i just don't know necessarily that valencia should be a favorite on an island coming off a big win against against real madrid so um definitely like uh my Orca getting that quarter of a goal they're still probably going to play a defensive brand of football valencia are going to try their best to uh create goals and i think it's going to leave them open to counterattacks, which um, for a bad defense is going to be really hard to sustain and really keep out for a long, long time. So, uh, I think, I think Mallorca plus a quarter is, is, I mean, it's very juiced right now, potentially it falls to pick them and it would make a lot of sense, but, um, I like, I like Mallorca as a home dog and hopefully it stays there when time kickoff occurs. Um, I do wonder, cause Mallorca do rotate quite a bit though. It seems like, uh, Javier Aguirre has, has done a good job of, of trying to keep his team healthy. Hasn't really worked with results, honestly, but, um, they've been they've been working to try to keep people healthy. And I feel like um, the thing with with them is is you don't really know what that lineup is going to look like. So I, I don't think you'd play it now because they tend to rotate big time for uh, the quick English Volker or as they say in German or in English weeks, the, the quick two two matches in, in four days type situation. Last but not least on Thursday, we have Osasuna, a quarter goal underdog with all the juice right now at home to Athletic Club Bilbao over under is two and a quarter uh, juiced heavily to the over, which um, immediately falls under my radar is something I want to bet against. Cause I don't, I don't trust either teams to score. We saw them in Copa del Rey semifinals. I think I played Osasuna and under in both uh, the first leg and second legs. Um, I wish I had taken them to advance. I don't think I did that, which is 
I mean, hindsight's 2020, of course, it's always easy to win bets when you see the next day's newspaper, but um, I don't think there's goals in this one. Athletic club have been playing better. I don't believe in it. Um, they've been an awful home team. So great. They get to go on the road, but I think it's gonna be harder for them to score. They've already had trouble at El Sadar. They did have, I think they lost one nil in the first leg and then uh, ended up equalizing and going extra time, but lost there. Um, I just, Osasuna have not been scoring goals, so it does make me probably more interested in the under than in the quarter of a goal that Osasuna are getting, but they're at home, and I feel like there's good chances in goalless draw. Athletic Club coming off, I mean, these are all quick turnarounds. Um, Osasuna played, I thought, I mean, the, the announcer said it, uh, that he thought that Osasuna played a much closer game with Atletico Madrid on the road that ended 3-0, um, was much closer than that, and seemed to be some really great chances. I mean, great goal from Angelito Correa, as he said. Um it's always weird to add Ito to everybody. But anyway, um, I just feel like Athletic Club are still a side I want to bet against. I don't trust them to score. I thought that Antoni Iriola was going to leave Rai Vallecano for Athletic Club, but it doesn't seem like that's happening. So um, Valverde has been pretty disappointing. Um, in terms of like European stuff, I guess, Athletic Club, they're, they're holding on to a European place on 50 points. They'll get to see because it's the last match of the entire week. They're going to see what everyone's results were. That might be good if there's some pressure on them or if people haven't done much, then, I mean, they still want to win here. They're on the road against a, a, a Basque rival, potentially. Um, I, I'm very interested in under and in that quarter of a goal at home. So uh, for my best bet, I think Rio is, excuse me, I think Mallorca is too tough because honestly, we don't know what that lineup is going to look like whatsoever. Um, Hitafe are still only a two goal underdog. So our over under is two. So uh, we're waiting for two and a quarter, but it's not there yet. Um I mean, Elche does look very, very interesting to me. I got to say, it's kind of sick. I feel like a sicko uh, wanting to bet a clearly relegated side, but they've been playing very well. Um, and that's kind of hard to to look away from. Uh, I'm going to go with the Osasuna under two and a quarter is my best bet for Spain. Uh, I just feel like that is a, a matchup where two teams that aren't really likely to score, and I don't feel very good about them having a lot of success. Um, I'll pay to see them get three goals. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think a lot of these clubs are ready for the season. And I also think it's kind of a European battle, two sides that are trying to clinch European positions as soon as with not a good result midweek against Atletico Madrid, but um, this is a good chance for them to get back in that race. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to move and of course I find it for the, uh, the Copa Italia final. And that is Fiorentina against Inter Milan. And that is in Rome at the uh, Stadio Olimpico. Um, so I think Fiorentina and Milan are kind of equidistant in the opposite direction, not that close to, to Roma, but forgive my uh, uh, Italian geography. I've only been to Venice and a wedding in the boot or something like that. Um, Bari, it might not be the boot. Anyway, correct me if you're listening to this and you know Italian geography. Slide in the DMs, Real underscore G Warner on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, wherever you want. Um, currently, Fiorentina, a half a goal underdog. No home team here, but half a goal underdog with all the juice. Over under is two and a half. Juice the under pretty heavily um, and the lift the trophy odds, the two advanced number, uh, including extra time. Fiorentina plus 160, 100 wins you 160. Inter Milan one to two, so 200 bucks to win 100. Um, Fiorentina, they are, I mean, they've had a better year than I would expect, but uh, have also had to play conference league all the way, um, had to come back from a deficit. Um, so they've had a lot of, work to do um inter milan of course going to the champions league final but they got to play on tuesday or i think it was tuesday um so that helps um legs should be in better condition but um at this point i think everyone's playing for a trophy the best lineups will be out there um probably saw some rotation this weekend and uh inter they want to counterattack you i don't know that that's going to happen in this one fiorentina i just feel like are a big enough underdog at a half of a goal that if they draw and go to extra time you win I don't think that's enough for me. Inter have played so well. Um, they've been so dominant. Fiorentina, to me, are just not a very good team in, in general, I don't think. Um, I don't know necessarily that Fiorentina have the like um, the wherewithal to be like, hey, we need to stop Inter from crushing us, so we need to try to play really defensively and then try to get a goal we can um, kind of out of off the beaten path and then try to keep Inter from scoring. Problem is Inter, they're so deep. They don't really have the eye-popping players ultimately, but um, I guess they do have some based on results, but like not ones you'd think about are going to be on the cover of FIFA 24 or whatever. Um, instead, they have a lot of depth. They got a lot of guys that they play the same system. It's worked pretty well. I feel like Simone Inzaghi, who had a lot of questions about him keeping his job, deserves to keep it based on their performances this year. Of course, you're going to the Champions League final if they somehow 
steal a, an upset against against Manchester City. I mean, he's definitely keeping the job. Not winning Serie A was disappointing, but Napoli killed everybody until they kind of got injured. So um, things are, are pretty good there. I don't know that Fiorentina getting a half of a goal is enough for me. Um, and it's pretty juiced at the moment. So I feel like it's not a good sign that it's going to get any higher than that. Or if it does, it's certainly not getting to a plus one, which is probably something I'd want, which we probably will never get. So I think I'm limited to an under interest, under two and a half. I feel like in a nervy like cup final um, where everyone wants a trophy, like it kind of goes down in your, um, how they remember you in your career. It's a big, big deal. And I feel like you're going to see good defensive efforts from two sides that maybe um, sometimes forget about defense and pursuit of offense. But I think in cup ties, they always play much more conservatively. And I feel like they're the best uh, bets for me to make. And, and my, I got to go through end of season and really check all the records. But I feel like that's been um, some of the most lucrative areas for me to look for are, are those cup ties. So um, ultimate best bet about to come. I'm going to go with best bet in Italy being the uh, Coppa Italia final. I'll go Inter Milan under two and a half goals in that one. So uh, this is the real underscore G Warner on Twitter and Instagram. Also on Patreon is betting the pitch number 198 uh, for ultimate best bets on this episode. We only got two leagues we're t- discussing on this episode, but we got La Liga going through midweek. Um, Full, full slate. And we also have Copa Italia, the final. Uh, for my best bet for Spain, I'm going to go the Osasuna under two and a quarter goals and the Fiorentina under two and a half in the Copa Italia final. Uh, for my ultimate best bet on this podcast, I'm going to go with Osasuna under two and a quarter goals. There are two sides that are hosting Athletic Club, both from the Basque region of Spain. Um, they played a lot of times this year. They've played in the semifinal, a two-legged uh, event, I guess you could say, getting into the final of the Copa del Rey. Osuna won that one. I feel like I like their chances at home. They had a pretty poor performance uh, on, on the weekend, but were a lot closer than the 3-0, 3-0 scoreline looked like at Atletico Madrid. I just don't believe in Athletic Club as a road favorite, and I don't think there's a lot of goals in this matchup. Might be a snooze fest. So take under two and a quarter, Osasuna and Athletic Club. And I'll do it for this episode of Betting the Pitch. Please uh, hit subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave a five-star review and I will read it. Um, Kind, angry, anything like that, I'll read it um, if I see it next time. Uh, Of course, check out the Patreon. I'm telling you it's good. You get all the sort of stuff. You don't have to worry about paying for soccer stuff and baseball stuff on on pregame. You get everything, all the liens every night, make a post, and then uh, update it throughout the day. Of course, any feedback for the listeners that uh, are Patreon subscribers or patrons, let me know. Um, it's been fun. Um, looking forward to the soccer kind of run it, rounding its its way at, to the end because I would love to sleep and I haven't for what feels like forever. Um, but we're almost there. It's been I, I feel like this is the perfect time of year where I, I perform the best because um, you get to kind of really take advantage of lines being set on on teams that need things rather than being deserving of the numbers. And that's what I'm looking for. So uh, let's go. Let's get in here. Um, uh, any. Feedback, questions, feel free to reach them out wherever you can. Uh, as soon as I see something, I will try to reply immediately. Um, talk to you. Might do a, an EPL pod if it makes sense um, in a couple of days. But if not, we'll see you on the weekend. And of course, check out the uh, baseball pods on pregame with Scott Seidenberg. Uh, that should be coming out on Thursday night into Friday. Talk to you soon. Ciao.